Hi guys, welcome to Kilowatt Auto. My name is Dan, and if you're new here, I started this channel to share the ownership experience of the Tesla Model 3. So if you're interested in learning more about Teslas, or if you just wanna see the car's progression to full self-driving, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. But with that said, today I wanna to share with you Tesla's latest software update. So I'm currently running version 2020.20.12. And in this latest update, Tesla released some fixes to the GPS. They also added some additional games in the arcade. But a lot of times, in addition to their patch notes that they release with each update, there are some background improvements that don't get called out in those patch notes. So I wanted to run the same route that I ran back in February when I was testing Autopilot to see if Autopilot has improved over the last several months. And honestly, I was really impressed with how the car improved. It definitely was a little bit more conservative with its speed around turns, but overall the car did a lot better. So today I'm gonna to walk you through the footage of that run and it was all on back roads. So I was using Autopilot and Auto Steer and it did have a bit of an interesting interaction with a pedestrian. So I'll be sure to show you the footage of that whole sequence of events. So we're going to jump right into the footage today and first up is going to be some mild curves. So at this point I'm still driving the car. You will see me hit down twice on that driver stock and now we know that autopilot is engaged. You can also tell that autopilot is engaged because the blue steering wheel will show up on the left side of the display there and then you can also see the two blue lines on each side of the car. So Based on my experience from last time testing this route back in February, I will say that the car was definitely more conservative with its speed, and you'll see that as it starts to approach the curves, and especially as it loses sight of the road, it'll reduce its speed until it has a better picture of what lies ahead. So this is kind of cool right here. As we take this curve, you'll see the little motorcycle actually show up on the screen there, and I'll try and get you a close up on the display. Over the last several months, they added more and more graphics onto the display. So when I first bought the car, all that was available was other cars that would show up down there. Now we're seeing other cars, trucks, bicycles, pedestrians, motorcycles, traffic lights, and even stop signs. You'll see the occasional trash can as well as some side road markers as well. So over the last several months, they've added more and more graphical items onto that display. And one thing I noticed as well is that sometimes the car would correct a little bit too late once it's approaching a curve. So it almost get halfway through the curve, realize it's going way too fast, and at that point start to apply the brakes and then correct itself. I will say that at no point during this whole trip today did the car cross the double yellow line, so that's already a huge improvement over the autopilot version that I ran back in February. So now we have some mild S curves and the car does really well with these. Again, as long as it's able to get a good picture of what's going on ahead, the car will ramp right up to the posted speed limit. And it's only when it starts to lose visual of what's going on up ahead will it start to slow down and drive a little bit more conservatively. One thing I noticed as well is as the road starts to narrow, the car does tend to hover towards the center lane line. This can be a little bit unnerving to other drivers because they'll notice the car getting cl much closer than a normal driver would to them. However, again, the car never did cross that double yellow line, so it always did maintain its lane. But again, just something that I noticed that is a little bit different than how people typically drive. So the stop sign and cones up ahead are the same as they were back in February when I took this road. So the stop sign is not an official stop sign. It's not something that's going to show up on a map, but it is something that construction workers placed here because the road is only one lane up ahead. And the car handled this really well. It recognized that there was a stop sign up ahead. It stopped at an appropriate spot. And then all I did was hit down on the driver's stock and the car proceeded as normal. So the same type of situation is gonna occur up ahead. So because this is not a mapped intersection, the car has to visually recognize that there's a stop sign here. So in this case, it's gonna recognize only about 200 feet where normal recognition occurs at about 600 feet, but it still does recognize that there's a stop sign there. It stops at the appropriate spot, and then I hit down on the driver's stock and the car drives through as usual. Now up ahead, the road gets really narrow and curvy, so you can see that the car is slowing down significantly. And you can also see what I was talking about where the car will get very close to the center yellow line, even though there's another car up ahead coming towards us. And this is actually where we're gonna have a pedestrian who's gonna be on the right side of the road. Again, it, the road up ahead is very narrow. It's curving to the right, and he's gonna be right there around the bend here. So the car sort of panics. Um, it slows down, not too aggressively, but it does slow to a complete stop because it looks like he's in the road, which he was 
was. Um, and then at this point, I just re-engaged autopilot and it proceeded as normal. This time to our third stop sign with cones. And you can see that the road still is crumbled and fallen away to the left of the road here. This one does stop a little bit past the stop sign because again, the car didn't recognize that there was a stop sign there until I had already rounded the corner and had to visually see that there's a stop sign. So it did stop and then I pressed the down on the driver's stalk and it proceeded through. So at this point, I've now turned around and I wanted to run this stop sign situation in reverse. So there's clearly cones in the road ahead. I wanted to see what the car would do. So it stops as normal at the stop sign and then it forced me to take over because the cones were in the way there. Didn't really know what to do. It wasn't aware to, to sort of merge over into that left lane and then come back over to the normal lane. So just to make sure that this was not a fluke, I did run it a second time again. So you can see that it will recognize that there's a stop sign up ahead. It is gonna slow down, but it's not sure how to proceed. So it's gonna have me take over even if I push down on the driver's stock. So at this point, I just take over, move the car around the cones and then re-engage autopilot once we're back in our lane. So looking back at testing autopilot in February, I can see significant improvements in the car's autopilot system just over the last several months. And driving with autopilot on back roads is notoriously difficult only because the car very easily loses its field of view up ahead. It's a lot different than when it's driving on the highway, for example, when in most cases it has several thousand feet of visible road ahead of it. But on back roads, because it tends to lose that field of view in the curves and with trees and other obstacles that it might encounter, it's definitely a little bit more conservative. But overall, I was really impressed with how it functioned today. It didn't cross a double yellow line a single time. It did have that kind of weird interaction with the pedestrian, but to be fair, he was basically in the road, so the car really didn't know how to proceed at that point. But overall, again, definitely a significant improvement in the autopilot system and auto steer on back roads. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and also consider subscribing if you'd like to see more progress of the car to full self-driving. I do post a new video every weekend, and if you're interested in seeing more autopilot videos, check out my autopilot playlist, which I'll link at the end of this video so you can see more of how the car functions both on back roads and on the highway. But with that said, I'll see you in the next one.